that was a horrendously dark episode in the Warring Army. I mean, cut crap. I was just like, uh, the beginning of the episode, beginning of the episode was really, really happy and somber, and then Bo just went, just went, you know what, you, you, you just, you don't want to be, you don't want to be happy. No, you want to be sad and depressed, and yeah, they, they bought it. They bought it. Nora came back. Nora was actually sent to the episode. And I was like, yes, Nora is the center of the episode. That was what I was waiting for this whole season. Nora to become the center of the episode. And she was. I mean, that whole transition when Yato became um, the God of Calamity again, it kind of was like, oh, okay, okay, I get it. I get it somehow. Like, the whole episode was, the whole episode was about not one to forget. Like, when um, you find out about the past and what happens when an unknown god basically gets forgotten, he disappears. Like, he doesn't become anything anymore. So, my plausible theory was that Nora's still around and not being completely exiled is the fact that he doesn't want someone to forget him. So, if he has no one to forget him, he can't disappear. So, the fact that Nora's still around and still, Nora still remembers him, that must be the plausible idea that maybe, just maybe, he won't, he won't disappear. Because otherwise, he will disappear. And I, I get, I might be completely wrong, but that's how I see, that's that's how I see her still be around. It's like, as the only plausible idea I can see her still being around. Like the fact is that she's the only one he's got left. Or if anyone else disappears, that's the only one he's got left. So if he, just, he doesn't forget him, then he can be completely fine. Because otherwise, if, if everyone completely forgets who he is, he will be disappeared. Because don't forget, he says he he wants to be here already the best, the happiest girl on earth. Kind of I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. But then you realise the hidden meaning behind that is the fact if he exiles Nora, or actually it's, it's, it's Hidi, I think her, her name was, or Hidio, I think it's something like that. It's, it's, either, it's either an I or an A, or an O. But yeah, I mean, if he if he exiles, because now everyone won't forget him, if he exiles Nora at that point, there's not going to be a problem. There wouldn't be a problem in the whole in the whole situation. But if he already forgets who he is, and then he doesn't have Nora around, and so Yukine forgets as well, then, yeah, he f no one will remember who he is, and he'll disappear. That's how I'm seeing, that's how I'm seeing the events as anime happening. Well, that's, how I, that's my theory behind it. I might be completely wrong, again, I'm just saying it, I might be completely wrong. But how my, how that works is kind of plausible. Maybe because Yato goes back to being in Good Calamity for a bit, is to make is maybe to see if everyone will still remember him. Like, maybe maybe the plausible idea that he still wants to become a god of calamity, which, again, that bit was freaking dark. Like, he was murdering people. I was just like, no, Yati, don't do it. Don't do it, baby. Baby don't can't. Baby can't. My, my baby Yato can't do that. No. And then, maybe he did that just so he can see if anyone would forget him. And, yeah, to make extent it didn't work because um, he already still remembers him. But he didn't. he doesn't actually remember where he is. She just remembers who he is, and again, that also comes, that also factors in with the kid from the high school that Gato states. I'm guessing in season one, if I can't really remember, because when he came out, I know I was like, I saw I've seen him, I and mean, I didn't remember who he was, but yeah, basically he hit, his character forgot who he was. So I'm guessing the fact is he went back to being a good calamity for a bit. It's because that he wanted to see if anyone would forget him. That's how I'm seeing. And also the Ibisu arc. I mean, his character is quite dark. Pardon the rhyme, but yeah, he's starting to disappear again. He make basically he makes like phantoms into his puppets, like he absolves them, they become his puppets, using a mask. But then in in turn he becomes he comes like blighted. That's the word I was looking for, blighted, and then he actually gets killed. So he's constantly doing it on over and over again because a god can constantly re uh, reincarnate, so it's not a problem. And then basically he's, he's come, he keeps on doing it because. He's going to build his army of people that he's got, and he's not going to die in the process, which is actually not a bad idea when you think about it. Because it's even, uh, they, they kind of like foreshadow it with Bushimon. The Bushimon actually completely gets blighted, she will, work, she will die, but she won't disappear, she's going to get reincarnated as a small person. But, I mean, yeah, going by that, I mean, the whole episode was freaking dark, it was good. I mean, it was freaking amazing episode. I mean, they handled the juxtaposition between the, dra between the comedy of the first half of the episode and the drama of the next half. And I liked a bit with the, when he was a kid. I want to know more about when he was a kid because that seemed like quite an interesting part of his life. But I mean, yeah, join me on my epic journey of today, which reminds me to review every single episode of Digimon Try as well as Noragami Arigato. And also two videos of Noragami Arigato in one week. Won't you be most impressed? But with all that said, I have been the driver and I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.